This video is made for beginners, casual gamers or non-gamers or anyone who has zero to low experience for this game. If you're looking for a cozy experience instead of this, then you're at the right place. This video does have minor spoilers revealing certain magic spells and game mechanics. There are however no story spoilers and I will show only the first world you visit. Check out the spoiler free version where I avoid talking about said mechanics and spells. You can also skip wherever you want with these chapters. Without further ado, let's get back into the video. Difficulty options should go by what you feel like. However, if you're looking for a rough guideline, I can provide some insight. Easy. For people who just want to enjoy the story of the game without having to deal with difficulties in battle. Additionally, if you're someone who rarely plays video games, or if you're not familiar with the combat style of this game, you can give easy mode a try. Standard. Recommended for a first playthrough of the game for anyone. There isn't much to say here. Proud. Either you're a gamer or you want a little bit more of a challenge to enjoy combat, pick this for your first playthrough. Some may consider Proud Mode in Kingdom Hearts 3 being the easiest Proud Mode in all of the series. Critical. Stay away from this mode unless you're looking for a real challenge. I recommend this to people who completed this game before. This is for the gamers who want to feel proud of themselves. Pun intended. Definitely not a comfortable way to play this game though. <laughs> Easy codes in general help you with roadblocks. This entire list of settings will help you go through harder difficulties without much worry, as you can tune it to your liking. If a boss fight is too difficult, you can turn on HP recovery and more to practice fighting it. If you feel like it, you can go back to a previous save file to redo the fight without the easy codes if you so wish. The freedom is yours. One of the biggest upgrades easy codes give you is the gummy ship setting, where you can set everything at max. Look it up. I know many people who don't enjoy these battles and this setting will make it easier to you. Me on the other hand, I'm addicted to it. <laughs> these three choices are more up to your preferred style. The main difference here are the stats that you start off with, mainly HP and MP, and nothing more. If you're reckless and don't want to think, pick Vitality for the highest HP stat to start the game off with. Magic is really strong regardless, which is why I leave this decision to your preferred style. Similar to the previous decision, this one determines when you learn the abilities with Sora. Guardian is the easiest due to abilities that help survival come by earlier. Again, pick what you prefer. The easiest one to play through will be the Vitality and Guardian combo by far. Attractions are strong, easily obtainable and there are abilities that further increases the chances. They are however a huge immersion breaker as it takes you out of the usual combat view and you are completely invulnerable throughout the entirety of the duration of these attractions. I recommend not to use it unless it's necessary. Some special fights won't you to use them for cinematic purposes. Use the keyblades you obtain. Each of them have their own abilities that you can unlock by leveling them up. Since you already have free slots for keyblades, this should be a no-brainer. Following right after, each keyblade has its own form change that will mix up the way you battle. For example, Hero's Origin, it uses a shield in its home change and you can store two counters. Unleash them for satisfying combat damage. Other keyblades such as Shooting Star gives you long range attacks. 
Most importantly here is how magic works with different form changes. If you find the time, try every magic spell with each form change and find out the changes yourself. Links are underrated and can be quite strong, yet some of them require more thinking. Each link has its own strength, try them out and see what you like. They can be fun to play with. I think there might be some ingredients around here. Jokes aside, this feature is underrated and underused. Even I rarely ever utilize this. If you struggle anywhere, try to eat a full course meal, as they also give a special bonus ability for the duration of the meal. Harder difficulty, the more important this feature will get for you. It might get tedious, but focus on the fun side of the collecting. The lucky emblems can give you really good gear to equip, such as the ribbons. It's mandatory to collect all 90 emblems for the strongest weapon, but you also get a very good accessory item if you do get them. Highly recommended, as it can also be a fun addition to the base game. Make a challenge with your friends, perhaps, who can find the most lucky emblems. Also, don't shy away from using online events. Even I had to do it to save time and trouble. Aero, the power of the wind. It is often underestimated. What does it do? Aero deals AoE damage just like Thunder, but it has two more side effects attached to it. It acts similar to a magnet, pulling enemies and swirling them around. Secondly, in the middle of the Aero spell, there is a lingering wind that will make you jump up into flow motion. This is my favorite spell for crowd control by a long shot. Blizzard, the favorite spell of those who like to poke hole, especially together with Aero. Blizzard freezes the enemy on impact while leaving an icy trail along the traveling distance for you to use flow motion on. Very good for large open area exploration, even more so when there's nothing to use air step on. Come on, this is top tier spell for traveling. <laughs> you thought magic was over? <laughs> no. Remember Keyblades? Form changes? Yeah! Some form changes, like the dual arrow guns, change how the magic spells work slightly. With the guns, you can shoot magic as projectiles, even Aero and Thunder. There's another form change that will make every spell as an AoE spiral, just like how Fire and Kingdom Hearts 2 works. This as well goes for all the different spells. Now that you know the secret of magic, go have fun! Now you know about the mechanics of the game, but there's one thing missing that might help you in the future. Full course meals that give the EXP incentive ability. Time to grab some ingredients, buddy. Yes, we're to talk about easy ways to get XP and level ups, but in a quick fashion. As mentioned, the EXP incentive ability is only obtainable through preparing and eating a full course meal. Additionally, this is the only way to get an ability that boosts your experience gain. Don't worry about grinding EXP for the story, you should do just fine if you follow the recommended levels in each world, especially if you're playing with easy codes. For post-game content, the best way to level up is through fighting the battle gates that you unlock once you're at Lost World. My favorite leveling gate is in the Olymp, once you enter the big shiny gates, where it's way too bright to see. <laughs> One more thing, the Dead of Night Keyblade, which you obtain at the start of the game, if you own the Steam copy of this game of course, has one of the best abilities. Not only has it Lucky Lucky to increase the enemy drop rates, but also Magic Roulette, which means that you can get Grant Magic Command for each element without even using them. If you have the Skeblade, you don't have to equip Cufflinks to get the Tsar version of the spells. However, you can still get the Cufflinks for the extra elemental boost if you desire. 
There are some last words I want to give you before we end it here. I hope they are helpful. Remember that you don't have to rush anything. There's no event that is time locked and you can't return back to it and miss the sweet rewards. No, this is a single player game. If you get stuck, you can just visit the previous worlds and form some level ups. Meanwhile, you'll be farming enemy materials passively, which you can then use to synthesize items in the mobile shops. If you don't understand something, there's always someone you ask for help. Ask a friend, on reddit or even in the replies to this video. I will respond to your question as soon as I can, and you will always find information if you seek them. The community got your back. Lastly, just go grab some snacks and drinks, as some cutscenes can take quite a while. <laughs> Another great way to enjoy these games is by having a friend watch you play and accompany you throughout the journey. You'll definitely have some fun moments and to remember. I just recently started doing such a run with my best friend where he makes the decisions for me and I have to adjust myself. It's a fresh breath of air for me and it hasn't been fun like this for a long time honestly. Thank you for watching. May your heart be your guiding key.